I'm David Dollar, a senior fellow in the China Center at the Brookings Institution. The easy part of that is partner and competitor. That's basically what we have between Europe and the United States right now. You know, we're partners in fighting global climate change, for example, or coordinating on Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But our firms compete very vigorously. What's complicated with China is that they're also a rival to some extent, uh, challenging some aspects of the international order. You know, most obviously right now they're supporting Russia in its invasion of Ukraine. Uh, so it's complicated to work with them on climate change, for example, and also to have our firms competing, which is good for both economies. Uh, but then we have this rival aspect. So it's really uncharted territory for major powers. And uh, I think we're going to have to work hard to get it right. So China right now is the largest producer of electric vehicles. It's also the largest exporter of electric vehicles. Uh, it's got a number of international firms like Tesla and Volkswagen that play a big role, but it's also got a whole bunch of Chinese private sector firms that have started up and have been successful. Europe is allowing these firms to invest. So you're starting to see Chinese plants uh, making batteries in particular, but also assembling electric vehicles. And I think we're going to see integrated production between China and Europe that's going to be very efficient. The United States is taking a more protectionist route, and it's trying to keep Chinese vehicles out of the United States. In fact, in general, it's trying to keep imports out of the United States in the electric vehicle market. And history suggests we'll end up with expensive electric vehicles in the U.S., and our transition to a green economy will be slower. So the interesting difference in the world right now. That's a very hard question because there's so much uncertainty in the relationship with, with China. Uh, but I think the most likely outcome is that it'll be similar to today in that there'll be areas where we do not have trade and investment for security reasons, advanced semiconductors or artificial intelligence. Uh, both Europe and the United States are restricting uh, a lot of the interaction with China in those areas. But then there's still an enormous amount of trade and investment and so I think the most likely outcome is we'll continue to wall off some sectors of the economy and, and essentially try to protect both Europe and the United States from China. But there'll be lots of important areas where we trade. The problem is there's a good chance that's wrong uh, and we end up with a more negative outcome where there's really a so-called decoupling between the West and China. And I think that would be it would make us all poor, basically, and I don't think it's the most likely outcome, but it's a risk we have to be aware of. There's so many different goods, and probably there's different perspectives on what's critical. China imports a lot of food, particularly from the United States and a number of other countries. China is very energy dependent in oil and gas from different parts of the world. So I think the Chinese would say those things are critical, you know, hard to run the economy without food and without energy. Uh, but also China imports a lot of high-tech products. Uh, both the US and Europe sell wide-bodied aircraft to China, for example. That's the kind of sophisticated product that they cannot make themselves. So there's a lot of advanced machinery. Uh, even with the US restrictions on semiconductors, there's a lot of semiconductor trade back and forth. So I would say high tech, uh, and on the other hand, natural resources like food and energy. Yes, but we should not be naive about that. So we have a lot of trade between the West and China that's not going to make them into a democracy, and it's not going to guarantee that we do not go to war but I think it increases the probability that we do not go to war. It, it's one more important factor in, in thinking about scenarios where there's conflict between the West and China. Uh, one factor for China has to be that it would be quite devastating for their economy 
uh, aside from all the human tragedy of war. So I think that in our economic interaction definitely makes it a little bit easier to cooperate on things like climate change, reduces the risk of war, but we shouldn't be naive that it's gonna turn China into Scandinavia, for example. Mm -hmm.